Hey, what's up guys? Worldwide here today with another new video. And bear with me on this one. I'm gonna probably ramble on a little bit and I think it'll make sense in the end, I hope. But anyway, if you're anything like me, you've been watching the Olympics this week and you will notice that the USA, again, has been pretty dominant. And that's kind of putting it lightly, to be honest. I mean, 10 gold medals, eight silvers, nine bronze for a total of 27. And the next closest is China, Japan, is down below they have nearly half well actually they do have half the medal count now because we've won a couple medals this morning so i think we're up to like 28 29. but anyway usa fairly dominant and rightly so in my opinion because if you look at the population of the united states as of this year 322 million people plus and that number is probably a little higher now so that's a lot of people and we're you know, we're fairly into sports. You know, we have a lot of elite athletes that dominate a lot of sports. Swimming, track and field, boxing, gymnastics, tennis. I mean, you name it. Obviously, we do really well. So that brings me around to the topic of this video. Darts. Let's go back to the population. 322 million people. And we play darts in every little small town. There's usually a dart league, whether it's steel tip, soft tip, doesn't matter. A lot of friggin' people play darts. And what the hell? We can't have one person, we can't have two people, a handful of people that can average 90 plus on the regular. We just don't have it. I mean, as much as I want to believe that, you know, we can produce a couple good dart players that can compete on a world level, it's just not there. It's non-existent. And if you look at the Netherlands, they're coming up on, this is as, as of today, actually, um, they're coming up on 17 million people. Look at the amount of dart players that they produce out of there. Let's take a look at the UK. Total of 65 million people. We have like five times that population. We can't produce one person to go over there and compete. So what the hell could it be? I have a few ideas. I want to share with you this article. This came out, I think it was like last, well, August 2nd. So last week, guy John, uh, John Marshall from the United States, he wrote this article. Yeah, John Marshall, he wrote this article, and I thought it was pretty interesting, to be honest. He's an American. I think he's over in the West Coast, and he had his opinions on the game, which were pretty similar to mine. He says that, you know, cricket is definitely more popular in the United States, which it is, hugely. If you go into any bar, pub, on a Friday night, 90, I would say 95% of the time people are going to be playing cricket. I mean, it's pretty much all they play. And I won't share too much of this, but I'll link the article in the description box so you guys can read it. But he says, this is John, I personally feel that cricket's popularity in the United States is part of the reason why darts never stuck here the way it has in Europe. And he makes a good point here. There's little drama to cricket. You aim for the same targets every time, and most importantly, darts that miss the target don't have any immediate consequence. So then he goes on, writes a little more, but I'd like to add on to that. Now here's what I want to add about the game of cricket, and this has to do with the pace, the actual physical pace of how you play the game. And I'm not trying to compare strategy, I'm actually not trying to compare cricket versus 501, I don't want to get into all that. Just talking about what holds us back playing cricket, and it has to do with the pace of the game. Now, let's say you're playing, you're, you're going first, and your first dart is right above that treble 20 wire, totally just blocking everything. So what are you going to do? You're going to move to the left or right a couple feet, and that takes time. You have to stop, readjust, scooch over a little bit along the hockey, and then try to force the second and third dart into the targets. And what that does, it takes a lot of time. Now picture a professional in the PDC playing a game of 501. Let's say they open up with that same exact first dart, totally blocks the treble 20. You know, what do those guys do? Without breaking any rhythm, without breaking stride, they go down to the 19s for a cover shot, and sometimes back up to the 18s, whatever. But they do go for the cover shot, and it doesn't take any time. You don't see these guys moving along the Aki very much at all. Usually the, when they'll do it is when they're going for a double, if they're blocked off, you'll see them move. Or if for some reason they're trying to leave a big out. But other than that, those guys aren't moving on the Aki at all. Now, if you just imagine, or actually next time you go to a league in the United States, just watch the players, actually physically watch them play, and just watch how much they move along the Aki. It's incredible just how much they're moving and how slow the game of cricket is. And I think that just doesn't, it doesn't bode well with trying to play 501. It doesn't carry over at all. And another thing I want to point out are the 
tournament formats that can be seen all over the United States. Now here's an example from the USA Classic Dart Tournament held just a few days ago. Let's scroll down a little bit. First of all, you'll see 12 events, which that's just terrible. But anyway, the highlight was on Friday night at the Pro Shoot 501. So a lot of emphasis based on this one. It has the highest, well, second highest payout. The men's singles had 2,800 overall. Pro Shoot had $2,400 payout. And let's look at the problem here. This was the, this is from the Darts Connect website. These are all the stats. So Friday night tournament, this is the pro shoot results. And look at that. 2-0, 2-1, 2-0. Yep, that's right. Best of three in a pro shoot. And to make things even worse, uh, how you start the game. You have to uh, bull up, shoot at the bullseye to determine who goes first at the start of every single leg. So really, what sort of crap is that? Let's say I start leg one, I win the bullseye, I go first and shoot an 18 darter. So right around an 83 average. It's going to take 100 average to break throw, and I can repeat that in the second leg. So that's just a terrible, terrible format. A best of three in a pro shoot. But anyway, yeah, things like that are just holding us back. And you know, I can almost hear like the cricket lovers. You know, I'll probably get a lot of hate from the Americans about this video. But guess what? You look at Michael Van Gerwen, Anderson, Taylor, Adrian Lewis. I can keep going down the list of the top top 10 in the PDC. Uh, Peter Wright, Chisnell. Guess what? Those guys aren't playing a lot of cricket. They're not spending all their time practicing playing cricket in order to get to that elite level. But anyway, to round about and get back to the Olympics, I mean, what's it going to take for the USA to compete in darts like we do pretty much in every other sport? I mean, we dominate every other sport, but man, darts is just... It's out of reach for us. We cannot seem to do it, and we continually, year after year, we spend time playing cricket. We do these awful tournaments with 12 events and best of threes. So until that changes, man, forget it. You know, forget about playing darts at a high level. It's just not going to happen. But I'd kind of like to hear what you what you guys have to say. So comment below, and I will link this article from John Marshall in the description box or in the comment section. So make sure you have a read of that. That was an awesome article. And we will see you on the next video, guys. Later.